Hello, welcome back to my channel. So, it's been a couple weeks since I've switched over using the 3D printed hand as my daily driver. And I have to say, so far I'm very impressed with what the device is offering me. Today, I thought I'd show you what's involved in making the overmold silicon fingertips. So let's get started. The process starts with printing a nine piece sheet of the clip-on inserts. You only use three per set because the pinky's dimension doesn't allow the use of a reinforcing insert. I then go and set up the five piece mold. That's nothing more than closing the book and putting a clamp on the end. Next thing you do is prepare the silicone. I've experimented with a bunch of materials to make the distals out of. Anything from Alumalite mold putty to GE silicone 2 caulking to what I think is the best is Alumalite Silplat 25. I've had really good luck with it and they're just soft enough that they add a lot of grip but not so soft that they're really squishy. Maybe 35 or 40 would be a better match for more of a long wear thing, but then you start kind of getting into the, into the world of a urethane. Since we're making such small batches, I meter it out with a couple 10 milliliter syringes. Start with B. Then move on to A. Be sure to put it in the other pill container. And be sure not to use your A syringe in your Part B silicone. Go ahead and put them in your degas pot and pull a vacuum. Since they aren't mixed, you can cycle this several times to be sure to get as much air out as you can. Degassing is important, but not imperative. These fingertips were done without degassing. And they work and look fine, they just have lots of little bubbles in them. Which in my case, gives me just a little bit softer of a fingertip than if I had solid degas silicone. It really is amazing how much air is trapped in the silicone. So now that the bubbles have slowed down, go ahead and turn off the vacuum pump and move your part A and B. I'm going to go ahead and do the high pour method to transfer it into the solo cup. Now from when it goes into the cup, your clock's ticking. On the Silplat 25, you have a 35 minute work time and, it, and you can demold in 24 hours. I found that's a little bit less than 35 minutes, but your results might vary. I'm going to use a straw to get the very last out of the bottom. Since it uses just about 20 milliliters of silicone to fill these molds. I'm mixing using the side of the cup, being careful trying not to introduce any extra air into the silicone. If you do happen to make some air bubbles, it's okay, just throw it back in the vacuum chamber. But remember, clock's ticking. Okay, now that the bubbles have slowed down, go ahead and turn off your vacuum pump and slowly open up the valve. Now go ahead and fill the molds. Now that the molds are pretty full, go ahead and drop the caps on there and then go ahead and put the top clamp on it. Next what I do is I'll tip it at about a 45 degrees and I'll, and I'll pour just a little bit down into the sprue holes 
just to make sure that it's all the way full. Now that the sprues are full, go ahead and put the second clamp on and you're done. Just wait for about 24 hours and start the demolding process. After the silicon's cured, release the clamps and carefully pry out the top. After that, put your knife in the book match and gently open up the mold. Being sure to go slowly enough that the silicone releases from the mold and doesn't just rip. From there, pull the distals from the mold and remove any of the excess flashing. And there you have it. New distals. In the next couple videos, I'll let you know what type of longevity I'm getting out of these and how often I'm having to replace them. That's about all I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share my videos. And if you have time, leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Goopy doos. Goopy doos.